WBBM FM Chicago. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. So chew Wrigley's Spearmint Gum often, every day. Millions enjoy it, and you will, too. And now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his mama Basco in Italy. Tonight is going to be the first day of my new night school at Terman, and I'm all ready. I bought the new pencils, a new eraser, a new notebook, but as only one in trouble, I still got the same old brands. <laughs> Come on, me, it's so exciting the first day of a new term. Tonight, when I start my 3A class, I'm going to be just like millions of other American kids starting in the 3A. Except that before I go to class, I'm going to take a shave. <laughs> and also to make extra special impression on my beautiful teacher, Miss Spalding, I shined up my shoes in nice and bright, put on my best suit, and I'm going to wear a white shirt with a tie. Mamma mia, believe me, tonight I'm going to look good enough to be captain after school. <laughs> <laughs> She's a, such a wonderful girl in my school teacher. Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Uh, hello, Pascari. Ooh, how beautiful you look. <laughs> Just like a dummy in a store window. Uh, oh, thank you, Pascari. It's very nice of you to say that. Uh, How's it nothing? <laughs> nothing at all. A little banana nose. <laughs> hey, what's happened? You ask Rosa for a date? No, Pascari. The reason I'm dressed up is it because today is the first day of the new term. Ah, so that's why you took such a short haircut. So your head is going to have more room for new brains, uh, eh? <laughs> well, all right, Mascali. You, you can make a fun of me, but but I'm still going to keep going to night school. So, so goodbye. Wait, wait, Luigi. Look, you ain't a kid no more. Time is flying. Well, so what? So don't you think you should spend the rest of your life doing the things that you was born to do? Like what? Like raising a family. Pasquale, I ain't got no family to raise. <laughs> that ain't a Rosa's fault. <laughs> Pasquale, don't you never give up? Only when you give up. Well, goodbye, Pasquale. I don't want to be late for the first day of school. Now, wait, wait, Luigi. Rosa did a hair up a little different tonight. Huh? I want you to take one look at her before you go, eh? Who knows? You might change your mind. Well, all right, Pasquale, but... Call it out, only just to say hello. Huh? Good, good. Rosa! 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 You could be happy! <laughs> yes, baby. Well, Luigi? She looks nice, Pasquale. <laughs> Thank you, Luigi. You look beautiful, too. <laughs> well, Luigi, you got an appetite to get married now? Pasquale, she's got enough appetite for both of us, and I'm not hungry. <laughs> wait, wait, Luigi. No, no, see you later, Pasquale. Goodbye, Rosa. <sighs> Papa, what are you going to do with me? I don't know, but whatever I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it with Luigi. <laughs> The 
first day of school is always the most exciting, isn't it, fellas? Oh, begging me. I, I am so yittery now. I, I'm all goose pimples. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder what, what's the keeping Miss Spalding, huh? Ach, what is everybody so nervous about? Look on me, I'm I'm as cool as a cucumber. Smile, <laughs> <laughs> everybody. Here she comes. Oh, yeah, look, look, she never looked more beautiful. Good evening. How are you all tonight? Well, what are you staring at? Mr. Schultz, the cat got your tongue? As long as he leaves me my eyes, I ain't complaining. <laughs> Gorgeous tonight, Miss Spalding. A real lollapalooza. <laughs> Thank you. Just a new dress. Uh, Miss Spalding, I, I, I brought you a little something. Oh, how thoughtful. Uh, that's a perfume with a French name, but you're going to smell it sweet in any language. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Basco. Miss Spalding, a little something for me to you. Thank you, Mr. Harwood. And something for me, too, Miss Spalding. <laughs> Why, thank you, Mr. Olson. And here's my bribe. <clears throat> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Schultz. Class, why the sudden burst of generosity? You know, we are just doing our Christmas shopping a little early this year. <laughs> hey, now, Miss Spalding, we, 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 we just want to show you, Miss Spalding, our appreciation for having us such a wonderful teacher. And we're just so happy that we're lucky enough to have you for another five months. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. What? What's wrong with me, Spalding? You... Hey, you look pale. I'm not going to be your teacher this term. <laughs> what? 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 what did you... I came in to visit you for a moment before I go into my own class. Our principal assigned me to another 3A class for this term. How oh, you mean... We're we going to have... Another teacher? Well, there's nothing I can do. Our principal, Mr. Orth, feels that a change of teachers is good for pupils, that it gives them a fresh viewpoint. But we love the old viewpoint. <laughs> <laughs> he can't do that to us by yingini. It is against all the sacred principles of democracy at work, wherein the majority of a group has the right to decide for itself its own future rule. And besides... The old has... stop already. They are stealing our teacher away, and you are filibustering. <laughs> Miss Spalding, uh, couldn't you complain about, the, about, about losing your class? Well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Basco, I did, but Mr. Orth can get very stubborn at times. I, I'm sorry, class. I'm going to miss you. Well, you can still keep the presents, Miss Spalding. <laughs> yeah, sure. What would I do with a dozen lace handkerchiefs? <laughs> Miss Spalding, if you're not our teacher, who's going to be the new one? Well, uh... It's not going to be pleasant news. Good evening, Miss Spalding. Mamma mia, we got the Mr. Heine. Oh, no. The grammar school Gestapo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 good evening, Mr. Hine. Just dropping in for old time's sake, eh, Miss Spalding? Uh, yes, yes, kind of. Well, I, I, I'll be seeing you, gentlemen. Goodbye, Miss Spalding. Uh, come. See us when you pass by. Take care of yourself. Pray for our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hein, they're a wonderful class, really, and I know you'll have a lot of fun teaching them this term. <laughs> yes, I'm looking forward to it with pleasure. He must have gotten a new whip. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodbye. Mr. Hine, last term, we were... Silence! Oh. <laughs> I know this class only too well. On two other occasions, I have substituted for Miss Spalding, and you've given me nothing but trouble. Now listen to me, all of you. Mr. Schultz, why are you staring out of that window? I'm trying to work up enough courage to chump out. <laughs> Silence! <laughs> that starts you off with a nice big fat zero, Mr. Schultz. Now get this in your heads, class. I am not a substitute anymore filling in for an easygoing, indulgent, pretty blonde teacher. It should only happen to us. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, were you whispering under your breath? Uh, yes. Yes what? <laughs> yes, Sergeant. Sit down! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, perhaps you're laboring under the misguided illusion that I'm here to play games with you. Well, get this and get it straight. You keep up your shenanigans and I'll see that you spend the rest of your life in 3A. Is that clear? Yes. Yes, what? 
And don't you ever let me hear you say yes, Sergeant, again. Yes, Corporal. <laughs> what did you say? Speak up. I said yes, 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 Mr. Hines. That's better. Mr. Basco. <laughs> Mr. Basco, how far did Miss Spaulding take this class in American history last term? I, I think it was up to the Civil War. I think, don't you know? That's right. What's right? I think I don't know. <laughs> how stupid can one pupil get? I don't know. The time is younger yet. <laughs> Sit down. Mr. What's your name? Horowitz. Full name and stand up when you're speaking. My name is Nathan Horowitz. I'm 46 years old and I have three children. Is that supposed to be funny, Mr. Horowitz? Frankly, I was trying to inject a little humor into the proceedings. Sit down. And I'm injecting a zero on your card. Ha, ha, ha. Well, why don't you laugh, Mr. Horowitz? That's funny. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, Olson. Is that right, sir? Percy. <laughs> oh, I must say, Mr. Hine, you do have a wonderful memory. Yes, many people have remarked on that. Yeah, I have also heard from your former students that uh, you have a wide educational background and that you have developed your own unique methods of indoctrinating pupils with useful knowledge. Yes. <laughs> Olsen, butter him up, but don't grease him to death. <laughs> Schultz. Yes, yes. Stand up. I'm going to make an example of you to the whole class. This is what can happen to any one of you for the next five months. Himmel. Is that all you can say before I decide on your punishment? Yeah, but please, please let me have one look at my wife and children before I go. <laughs> <laughs> Before we return to life with Luigi, here's a suggestion that'll help carry you through a busy, strenuous day feeling more relaxed and satisfied. From time to time, especially when you're tense or under pressure, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, the good, easy chewing goes right along with what you're doing. It helps relieve that feeling of strain and tension so that work goes smoother and time passes more pleasantly. Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum tastes good, too. It freshens your mouth, sweetens your breath, and gives you long-lasting enjoyment and satisfaction. So when you've got a job to do and you've got to keep going at your best, chew refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum. Millions find it helpful, and you will, too. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, looks like we're going to have a terrible time this term in the school with Mr. Hine. All day he's a holler on us, he's a give us tests, and at the home we got a double homework. Only thing he don't do is a hit us. That's only because we fought to his one. And about the third night of the new term, we decide to hold a meeting in my antique shop and talk over what we're going to do. As president of the United Nations of North Halstead Street, I call this meeting to order. Will the delegate from Sweden kindly summarize our grievances against the common enemy? Yo ho. <clears throat> Mr. Hein has conducted himself with complete and total disregard for the feelings of his pupils as human beings. He has burdened us with undue homework, unnecessary and tedious examinations, profuse vituperation. In other words, he's a stinger. <laughs> That's right. I second the motion. Me too. Okay. Comes now the time for action. Does anybody have a suggestion how to subdue the enemy and get back to civilization with Miss Spalding? The delegate from Israel has the floor. <laughs> I say we must meet force with force. You mean knock his brains out? <laughs> no, we can be more subtle. Attack on, attack on his chair, glue on his chalk, 
Maybe cement uh, down the border races. Yeah, on the border, but if we do all those things, maybe they're going to throw us out of the school. So what? Does a prisoner complain when they force him to leave Alcatraz? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the delegate from Sweden has the flu off. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, the enemy is crafty, but we must be more crafty. Uh, perhaps if we made a direct appeal to Miss Spaulding. Well, Olsen, I did that. You spoke to Miss Spaulding? Yeah, I saw her in the, in the lunchroom, and I, I begged her she should talk with Mr. Ott, and he should uh, let her come back to our class. Yeah, what did she say? Well, she tried, and he said no. Well, the crafty ways have failed. Let's go back to the baseball bat theory of thinking. <laughs> Does anybody know where we can pick up a second-hand atom bomb cheap? <laughs> hey, wait, wait, the shoes... I got a big idea. The delegate from Italy just got it a big brainstorm. <laughs> Olsen was right. We got to be smarter than Mr. Hein. He's not going to let us go, but there's one person who, who maybe could convince Mr. Hein to go back to his old class. Who? His wife. Yo, why not? I know my wife runs my house. Well, naturally, every normal healthy wife is a born dictator. <laughs> Luigi, Luigi, I think you hit it on something. Women, you know, are very soft-hearted and sentimental. So we're going to appeal to Mrs. Hine to get Mr. Hine to take back his old class. She must notice how chumpy and angry he is since he's been with us. Oh, but, gentlemen, just one question. Uh, what if there is no Mrs. Hine? Oh, well, there is Olsen. I heard him talk about his, his wife and, and his kids. Yes, so what? He could have eaten them all up by now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you stop that. Uh, uh, Luigi, uh, are you sure he is married? Yeah, Olsen, come to think of it. I heard him talking about his wife, too. Oh, well, yeah, he must have a wife. Hein couldn't be happy unless he was torturing some poor, miserable creature full-time, 24 hours a day. <laughs> Luigi, is this the address you found in the telephone book? That's it, Toro. It's a... And there was only one Hein. Uh, more than one they couldn't stand. <laughs> Ring the bell, Luigi. All right. Yes? <laughs> uh, are you Mrs. Hein, a wife of Mr. Hein, the, the night school teacher? Yes. What do you want? Well, Mrs. Hein, we, uh, we belong to your husband's night school class, and, and we came here to ask you a bigger favor. Very well. I'll give you two minutes. Come in. We, uh, we was thinking... Go ahead, Luigi. Well, uh, I was, uh... Well, speak uh, up! Don't stand around like a bunch of dummies. Have you lost your tongues? Mrs. Heiner, we came ahead to ask you Just about... Just a moment. You there. No, me? Yeah. <laughs> Put out that cigar. I don't stand for cigar ashes on my rug. And as long as you're in my house, don't lean against the furniture. It's newly polished. Is that clear? Him and Mrs. Hine is Mr. Hine without the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> is that supposed to be a wisecrack? All right, call up your husband and tell him to give me a zero. <laughs> <laughs> Silence! <laughs> yes, Gordon. <laughs> Schultz, we got to be nice. Uh, uh, Mrs. Hine, we, we, we just uh, came here a little friendly visit to ask you about Speak the... Speak up! I hate a mumbler. We like you talking to your husband and tell him to get out to change the classes with Miss Spalding. And why should he do that? Well, your husband is a nice fellow, but, but he's a little bit strict with us. Adolf is strict? Adolf, him well, I knew it. Hitler is still alive. <laughs> Ridiculous. My husband is just as fair and impartial as... any supervisor of a chain gang. <laughs> Come on, fellas. We gotta get back to school before the keeper misses us. So, my wife informs me that you tried to influence her to get me to exchange classes with Miss Spaulding. You didn't think that she'd tell me, eh? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Heiner, we did. Yeah. Frankly, she looked like the squealer type. 
Mr. Schultz, you'll speak when you're spoken to. Yes, sir. I'm just about fed up with the low grades you've all made in the last few daily examinations. If you don't do better in today's oral test, I'm going to recommend to the principal that you all be expelled. Expelled? No, 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 you can't do that. All right, then. Close your books. Keep your eyes front. Heads are X. Speak only when spoken to. And the first one I catch whispering an answer goes down to the principal. First question. Mr. Uh, Horowitz. <laughs> you may give us the grammatical rule for the use of a period in a sentence. Would you mind please repeating the question? Zero. <laughs> That's not the way you said it the first time. Quiet. Mr. Uh, Basco. <laughs> Tell us the rule about the period. Well, a period, that's a... It should have stand on the end. I, I mean in a sentence and... Wait, wait Mr. Heine, I, I know, but I'm a little bit nervous. Sit down. Zero. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Schultz. Ooh, he got me hydra and hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you may tell us. Yeah. Mr. Schultz, why are you trembling so? Because I hate bloodshed. <laughs> Especially when I'm going to do the shedding. <laughs> There's no need for concern if you've done your work. Huh. You may tell us, when do we use the exclamation point? When we give a command. For example, stop bothering us. <laughs> uh, yes. And stop needling us. Needling? What are you giving us? Education or vaccination? <laughs> Mr. Schultz, I've had enough insubordination. I'll see the principal right now. No, no, no. Please, please, Mr. Hines. have you all thrown out of school. Now we got no Miss Spaulding. And no school. Three years of studying for nothing. Uh, Mr. Hine, I've been examining their test papers, and this plus everything you've been telling me about them proves that you're right. That class has fallen down in scholarship. No interest whatsoever in their work, Mr. Roth. I can only repeat what I've been strongly urging, that they all be expelled. Very well, as you say. They'll receive their dismissal notices in the morning. Good, very good, Mr. Roth. I must admit, that's quick. Thank you. And now then, Mr. Hine, what are your plans for the rest of this term? Plans? Why, uh, uh, I'll be teaching my class. But you just expelled them all. You have no class. <laughs> what? It looks as if you don't have a job anymore, Mr. Hine. Oh, Mr. Roth, I, I can take on some other night school class. There are no others, Mr. Hine. Of course, you are at liberty to seek employment in some other school. Wait, now, wait, wait, wait. L look, let's not be too hasty with this class, eh? shall we, Mr. Roth? Perhaps I can get more out of them. I hardly think so. Although Miss Spaulding got very satisfactory results from that same group, I believe her secret lay in treating the individuals in a way exactly opposite from yours. <laughs> please, sir, please, let me try. I'll change my teaching methods. I, I, I'll try. I'll try humoring them a little. Very well. Good luck to you, Mr. Hine. And let's see what happens. Yes, yes. We'll see what happens. Come now, Mr. Basco. In what year did the United States purchase Louisiana? Eighteen hundred. You're close. Try again. <laughs> Try again? Yes. You sure you, Mr. Heine? <laughs> sure, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Eighteen hundred and... Eighteen hundred and one? No. <laughs> 1802? <laughs> 1803? Stop, that's perfect. Now, now let me see. Who shall we call on next? Hey, Schultz, what's happened to him? Could be softening of the arteries. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, what did you say? I said you could be suffering from softening of the arteries. <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's softening of the brain. <laughs> well, now we'll call on Mr. Olson. Oh, no, no, don't bother to stand up, Mr. Olson. We needn't act so formal. We needn't? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Luigi, are we in the right cell? <laughs> Mr. Olson, I don't think I'll bother to ask you a question. You are a wonderful student. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> uh, Mr. Horowitz? Nathan Horowitz, I'm 46 years old and I have three children. Oh, how funny! <laughs> ha! <laughs> As a matter of fact, you are all doing exceptionally well today. So far, not one zero. Call on me, Mr. Hein, and I guarantee to break the ice. <laughs> Mr. Schultz! Okay, give me the zero. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I thought that remark was very witty. Then why didn't you laugh? <laughs> Come on, Mr. Hein, you can laugh better than that. <laughs> Mr. Art, this is the end. Good evening, gentlemen. Good, Good evening, evening, Mr. Art. Well, Mr. Hyde, I'm glad to see you're getting along so well with this class. Oh, they're a wonderful group, sir, and their grades certainly are improving. Good. Uh, I was going to tell you that I had decided not to expel this class, but rather have you exchange classes with Miss Spaulding. But uh, since you get along so well with them, perhaps I'm going to let you keep them. Oh, oh no, no. no. <laughs> We demand a lawyer. Good evening, class. Miss Spalding. Gosh, Mr. Orth, it's wonderful to be back here with my old class. It seems to be the only sensible solution, Miss Spalding. I must thought you, you, you mean we get getting Miss Spalding back? Yes. But you said before... I know it. I like to have my own little jokes occasionally. <laughs> well, come on, Mr. Hine. Your old class is waiting for you. <laughs> Mamma mia, what a horrible future. <laughs> hey, isn't that a funny Mr. Heine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you think, Horowitz? Ha! Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi. And they want to remind you that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint Gums the easy, enjoyable way to sweeten your breath and help keep your mouth feeling fresh and clean. There's lots of lively, full-bodied, real spearmint flavor in Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, and you can chew and enjoy a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint as long as you like, any time, any place. So, do as millions of people do. Keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum with you all the time. And whenever you want a taste treat or you want to freshen your mouth, chew a stick. Remember, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum gives you chewing enjoyment plus refreshing, long-lasting flavor. And it costs so little you can enjoy it often, every day. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Balding, Hans Conried as Joe, Joe Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olson, Earl Ross as Mr. Hine, Gail Bonney as Mrs. Hine, and Herb Butterfield as Mr. Orr. Music is under the direction of Lud Gluskin. Charles Lyon speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.